If you believe the fitness world, you need protein shakes, protein bars, and chicken breast at every meal. But your grandmother probably never counted protein grams in her life, and she was fine. So what's going on? Are we really not getting enough, or is this just clever marketing? Let's get one thing straight. Protein is important. Your body needs it to build muscle, repair tissue, make enzymes, and keep your immune system working. Without enough protein, you'd be in trouble. But here's the thing. Not enough is actually pretty rare in developed countries. The real problem isn't that we're protein deficient. It's that we've been sold a story that more is always better. And that story comes with a very profitable solution. Buy this powder, eat this bar, drink this shake. What do you actually need? The official recommendation from nutrition experts is about 0.8 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight per day. If you weigh 70 kilograms, about 154 pounds, that's roughly 56 grams of protein daily. For a 60 kilogram person, 132 pounds, it's around 48 grams. Let me put that in perspective. A chicken breast has about 30 grams of protein. Two eggs give you 12 grams. A cup of lentils has 18 grams. A glass of milk adds another 8 grams. You can hit your daily protein target with regular meals. No supplements needed. But wait, didn't that Instagram fitness influencer say you need way more? Yeah, probably. And they're not completely wrong, but they're also not talking to you. The athlete exception. Here's where it gets interesting. If you're lifting weights regularly or training for a marathon, you do need more protein than the average person. Athletes and serious gym goers might need anywhere from 1.2 to 2.0 grams per kilogram of body weight. Notice I said serious gym goers. If you hit the gym three times a week for 45 minutes, you're not in this category. You're active and healthy, but your protein needs aren't dramatically different from someone who doesn't work out. The problem is that fitness content dominates social media, so the advice meant for bodybuilders and endurance athletes gets broadcast to everyone. A 20-year-old guy trying to gain muscle mass needs different nutrition than a 45-year-old woman who walks her dog daily. But Instagram doesn't make that distinction. The marketing machine. The global protein supplement market is worth over $20 billion. That's billion with a B. These companies didn't build that empire by telling you that you're probably fine with the food you're already eating. Think about how protein products are marketed. They show you shredded athletes, promise lean muscle, suggest you'll have more energy and better performance. The message is clear. You're missing out without extra protein. But most studies show that once you hit your protein requirements, eating more doesn't give you extra benefits. Your body can only use so much. The rest either gets converted to energy, stored as fat, or expelled. You're literally flushing money down the toilet. What happens when you eat too much? Your body is pretty good at handling excess protein in the short term, but consistently eating way more than you need can cause problems. Your kidneys have to work harder to process it. Some people get digestive issues, and if you're loading up on protein, you're probably eating less of something else, often fruits, vegetables, and whole grains that your body also needs. There's also this. High protein diets are often high in animal products. That means more saturated fat, more cholesterol, and potentially more environmental impact. I'm not saying don't eat meat, but balance matters. The real protein deficiency. Who actually needs to worry about protein? Older adults, for one, as you age, your body gets less efficient at using protein, and you might eat less overall. Some elderly people genuinely don't get enough, which can lead to muscle loss and weakness. Vegans and vegetarians need to be more thoughtful too, though it's totally doable to get enough protein on a plant-based diet. You just need to eat a variety of sources – beans, lentils, tofu, nuts, seeds, whole grains. People recovering from surgery or illness might need extra protein temporarily. Same with pregnant and breastfeeding women. But for the average healthy adult sitting at a desk job, you're almost certainly getting enough. The bottom line so far. The protein obsession is real, but the crisis is manufactured. Most people in developed countries already eat more protein than they technically need. The fitness industry has convinced us otherwise because there's money in confusion. What about protein timing? 
You've probably heard about the anabolic window, that magical 30-minute period after your workout when you supposedly must chug a protein shake or all your gains disappear. Spoiler alert, it's mostly nonsense. Recent research shows that protein timing matters way less than we thought. What matters more is getting enough protein throughout the day. Your muscles don't suddenly shut down if you don't eat protein immediately after lifting weights. They're rebuilding for hours, even days after exercise. The whole post-workout shake industry was built on early studies that had significant flaws. Modern science suggests that as long as you're eating protein regularly, breakfast, lunch, dinner, your body has what it needs when it needs it. That said, spreading your protein intake across meals is smarter than eating it all at once. Your body can only process about 25 to 30 grams of protein effectively in one sitting for muscle building. Eating 100 grams at dinner doesn't give you superhero muscles. It just gives you expensive urine. The quality question. Not all protein is created equal. Your body needs 20 different amino acids and nine of them are essential meaning you must get them from food because your body can't make them. Animal proteins like meat, fish, eggs, and dairy are complete proteins. They contain all nine essential amino acids in good amounts. Most plant proteins are incomplete. They're low in one or more essential amino acids. But before vegetarians panic, here's the thing. You don't need complete proteins at every meal. If you eat a variety of plant foods throughout the day, you'll get all the amino acids you need. Rice and beans together make a complete protein. So do peanut butter and whole wheat bread. The human body is smart. It pools amino acids from different foods and uses them as needed. Your body doesn't care if the protein came from a chicken or from chickpeas, as long as it gets what it needs over the course of a day. Real food versus powders. Protein powders aren't evil, they're convenient, especially if you struggle to eat enough protein from whole foods, but they're not magic either. Here's what protein powder is. Dried, processed protein extracted from milk, whey or casein, soy, peas or other sources. It's been stripped of most other nutrients. Compare that to a piece of salmon, which gives you protein plus omega-3 fatty acids, vitamin D, B vitamins, and selenium. Or eggs, which include protein plus healthy fats, choline, and various vitamins. Real food comes as a package deal. Supplements are just one isolated nutrient. If you're replacing meals with shakes, you're missing out on fiber, antioxidants, and hundreds of beneficial compounds that science is still discovering. Also, the supplement industry isn't tightly regulated. Studies have found that some protein powders contain heavy metals or have way less protein than the label claims. When you buy chicken breast, you know what you're getting. With powder, you're trusting a company you've never met. The environmental angle, something people rarely talk about. Our obsession with protein has environmental costs. Animal agriculture is resource intensive it takes about 15,000 liters of water to produce one kilogram of beef. Cattle farming contributes significantly to greenhouse gas emissions. I'm not preaching vegetarianism, but the push to eat massive amounts of protein, especially animal protein, has consequences beyond your body. If everyone actually ate the amount of meat that fitness influencers recommend, the environmental impact would be enormous. Plant proteins have a much smaller footprint. Beans, lentils, and peas require less water, less land, and produce fewer emissions. They're also cheaper, which brings me to another point, the money factor. Let's do some quick math. A container of decent protein powder costs about $30 to $50 and gives you maybe 20 to 30 servings. That's roughly $1.50 to $2.50 per shake. Multiply that by 365 days and you're spending $550 to $900 per year on protein powder alone. Now compare that to real food. A dozen eggs costs maybe $3 to $5 and gives you six servings of 12 grams of protein each. Dried lentils are absurdly cheap, less than $2 per pound, and one pound provides about 100 grams of protein. Canned tuna, chicken thighs, Greek yogurt, all cost-effective protein sources.
The supplement industry has convinced people that getting enough protein is complicated and requires special products. It's not, and it doesn't. Humans have been getting adequate protein for thousands of years without powder and plastic tubs. What should you actually do? Stop obsessing. Seriously. Unless you're a competitive athlete, elderly, or have specific medical needs, you don't need to count protein grams. Eat a variety of foods. Include protein sources at most meals. Eggs at breakfast, beans in your lunch salad, fish or chicken at dinner. If you're plant-based, mix your protein sources throughout the day. Listen to your body. If you're constantly hungry, tired, or losing muscle mass, maybe you need more protein. But for most people, these issues are about overall calories or sleep, not protein specifically. Save your money. Skip the supplements unless you genuinely struggle to eat enough food. Spend that money on quality whole foods instead.